Hey, do you want something to drink? Uh, yeah. But is that alcohol? I mean, I'll take coffee with cream, but you have half and half, right? Of course I have half and half. Thank you. Let me just play some music and we'll get pumped up for this video. Oh, right, sorry, uh, forgot I'm on the West Coast. One second. Is that better? Here we go. Hey, everybody! Max here again. Welcome to another Hapa Hour. Shizuka is still in Tokyo, but I'm in LA right now with the lovely Katie. She's half Japanese, half American. Hi, I'm Katie. So um, today we just wanted to talk about being American halfies. And I feel like we can relate on so many levels just being half Japanese, but actually when I met Max, we realized that we're, there were a lot of differences between East Coast and West Coast. So we're going to talk about those differences today. Cheers. Kanpai. Kanpai. <laughs> the very first thing we want to talk about, I just want to hear once more about you're growing up on the West Coast because it seemed very different to me on the East Coast. Yeah, um, first off, California and the Pacific in general has quite a large population of Asian Americans. And so being half, just being Asian, wasn't that big of a deal. I just know at NC State where I went to school in North Carolina, it's like 5% Asian. That's crazy. It's probably like less than 1% Japanese, oh you know? <laughs> so when we saw like another Japanese or half Japanese person, it was a little bit of like a, wait, really? Like, <laughs> was it your own, was it your sibling? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, it's just like, you, there's so few that I felt like I, I didn't know there were other people out there like yeah. me. But I, like hearing from you, it's like there were a lot more half Japanese people around mm -hmm. you. Yeah, well, my cousins, um, who are older than me, so being half wasn't something new, it was familiar already within the family. And my best friend growing up was half Japanese, and my mom also put me into Japanese programs, so I didn't feel alone. You were in Japanese, like, school? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did one class. Yeah, me too, I did it too. <laughs> yeah, but you didn't need it. You no, no, but I learned I learned Japanese a little later when I finally went to uh -huh. Tokyo. But that's funny, like, okay, w yeah. we both did that, I guess. Yeah, well, I did one class and I know one word, right. Nihongako. <laughs> <laughs> but I also went to Kumon. My mom oh. put me in Kumon. Were you in Kumon? No, I was not. Oh, so he's not good at math. <laughs> no, she taught me, like, privately. <laughs> Oh, she did? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, I that's... was learning my multiplication tables at like age three or something like that. What? I think. Four? What? Okay, that's Four. next level. We win. <laughs> so obviously there are still a lot of things that we relate on being half Japanese, mm -hmm. but there are differences as far as like being on the West Coast, you're just around it a lot more. Mm -hmm. And I thought one of the big things that I was surprised at is you're Yonsei, fourth generation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your mom was a third generation Japanese. Mine's yeah. first generation Japanese. I guess your family was more trying to assimilate into American right. culture. Yeah, and that was because of the war. So my Japanese family was here. They could have two choices, which was either to relocate or be in the camps. And so my mom wasn't taught Japanese because my grandparents wanted right. their children to assimilate. So they were in California, right? So yeah, they were in California. They were in Terminal Island, which is um, it's very it's pretty. If you go to the Japanese American Museum here in LA, they talk a lot about. <laughs> See, just, just there, like, there's I have family in the museum. Yeah, just thinking about like a there's a Japanese American Museum like yeah. in North Carolina is so rare. <laughs> so um, there were three of my family members that were put in the camps and the rest of them all relocated. Mm -hmm. But they lost their homes, they lost everything. Yeah. So the government took it all and then um, when they went back to Terminal Island, which is around Long Beach here, everything was gone. So they bulldozed their homes, their schools, really? the communities. It was, the, the island was raised. So there was nothing when they went back. And they also were tuna fishermen. And when they went back, their boats were gone. They had nothing, so they had to start from scratch. And see, that's so weird because like, I had heard about the internment camps from my mom when I was like 16. You know, it, it, it took that long. 16. You know, because they don't teach it yeah. in schools. I think they kind of want to cover that part up. Right. But I still didn't really like 
could really relate, I guess, with that part because California didn't even seem real to me. <laughs> like, it didn't even seem like a real place. It's just I'm like, real. You can yeah. touch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> An avatar. I guess that's another thing. Like, I wanted to talk about. I grew up in the South. I think there, since there's a lot less Japanese and Asian people in general, being in my school is most of the time I was the only half Asian or Asian person. And then finally, yeah, and then finally I go to college and I've asked other full Asian people the same thing, but you start meeting all these other Asian people and like Asian communities and people are like, oh, like, yeah. you're also Asian, you. let's, let's be friends, let's be friends. And it was like a, actually like a closeness because there's so few. Yeah. And I, I wonder like in the West Coast, it's like you get a lot more individual like Asian yeah. groups. Yeah, and half is especially I think are the ones that more reach out and like, oh, you're, you're like my long lost brother, you're my long lost <laughs> sister, like you look like me. But the Asian communities were not Asian enough to be in them because there is such a large population. So we're sort of right. our own mm -hmm. entity. I, you identified as Hapa, I guess? Yeah, I identified as Hapa. I also have family in Hawaii. Okay. So I knew about the term Hapa uh, when I was young. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know about the term Hapa until I was like 22. What? I, crazy. Yeah, so like I would just, I still kind of consider myself just half Japanese. Yeah. Or because I lived in Japan. Right. Hafu, the Japanese term for being half. Which I just learned. I really? actually didn't know the term <laughs> Hafu when I. <laughs> oh, no way! Yeah, yeah, I always was a hapa or han which is half like chow han <laughs> <laughs> but even in japan it's becoming a little more common to see other half japanese people it wasn't so common i guess 20 years ago no but no. now it's common enough that they could actually make a movie about it and um, did you see the photo of miss universe japan i did she's half japanese Yay! <laughs> Half black and half Japanese. Yeah, she's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. like it's. I think it's also super different growing up in Japan yeah. as a half Japanese person. Yeah, and almost like tougher in, mm -hmm. in some ways because Japan's so homogenous. Yeah, and I think by her being in the in the place in the face of Miss Universe is redefining identity and culture and nationality. And is it what you look like or is it? You, um, because you live there and it, it's really interesting to see the discussion that's been happening since she is now right. the face of Japan. But it's, you can definitely tell that there's a difference that, you know, being half Japanese still is not mainstream right, <laughs> as, no. as like the West Coast. <laughs> no. Like, yeah, I think, I think it's great. I celebrate mm -hmm. her. It's kind of like our Obama. You know, it's yeah. a change. It's You have like a role model. Yeah. And it's nice to see again somebody that you identify with. I don't know if you, well, you didn't play with Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I don't know you. I still Maybe you know. uh, <laughs> played with Power Rangers. Oh. <laughs> But yeah, there there wasn't a Barbie that I could identify with. There was one. Her name was Tropical Miko. <laughs> <laughs> she Whoa. was the exotic one. The exotic one. I know, I hate, I hate that term. It's like, I'm a bird. So anyway, guys, thanks again so much for watching this video. Thanks again to Katie. She's an actress in LA, and she actually has her own YouTube channel. That's right. It's called Almost Asian, and it features my life, everyday life going through my ups and downs of being half Japanese. And if it wasn't for Almost Asian, I wouldn't have met this guy. Right. <laughs> so anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you want to leave a comment about your respective half or, you know, you don't even have to be half Japanese <laughs> to leave a comment, but let's just start a discussion. Thanks again so much for watching and we'll see you guys in another video. All right, bye. Hey, Kale. Dip! Come by! Bye! <laughs> we didn't have to actually drink. <laughs> <laughs>